All right, guys, we're going to be factoring out a monomial. Um, for my afternoon classes, I apologize that I'm not here today. Um, I want you to learn the lesson, so that's why you guys are getting it via video. So you guys should have the notes in front of you, and you're going to fill it out as normal, even though I'm not here today. All right, so our objective is to factor out a monomial. We're going to be using greatest common factor to be able to do that. So let's take a look at problem number one. We have 75 and 50. All right, when you think of 75 and 50, what coin do you think of, everybody? A dime. A quarter is the correct answer. A dime is not the correct answer, Jack. All righty, so a quarter is correct because we know that 25 can go into 75 and 50. So for number one, everybody write down that the GCF equals 25. All right. Moving on to number two. Now number two has numbers and we have also the letters. We're only going to focus on the numbers for just right now. So we have 36 and 21. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how I do GCF. Um, for my afternoon classes that are watching this, we actually just went over it for homework, so I want to make sure you're okay with this. I always start with the um, lowest of the two numbers. So my smallest number is 21, and I write out the factors. 1 times 21 and 3 times 7. Okay, so I have my factors. Then I take my calculator to see which one is the greatest number that goes into 36. So with your calculator, you can take 36 divided by 21. That is a decimal, so you know it doesn't go into it. 36 divided by 7 it is also a decimal, so it does not go into that. And then 36 divided by 3, as you'll see on your calculator, it's 12. So 3 is the GCF. 3 is the greatest number that goes into both of them. All right, now... For the letters, this is where it gets a little tricky. So y to the second is just simply y times y. Everybody write that down. y to the third is y times y times y. So here is the question. What is the greatest number of y's that I can take out from both terms Two. without going into the negatives? What is it? Say it out loud. Two. It is two. Very good. I can take two from here and two from here and still have um, enough y's. So y to the second power is then going to be the GCF, the greatest common factor. Okay, if you didn't get it the first time around, we're going to try another one. So let's take a look at example number three. Okay, so we're going to deal with the numbers first. We have 45, 18, and 18. If you need to write down the numbers, you can. Remember, start with the smallest number. Writing out the factors. And then you can start using your calculator or using your brain to figure out which of those is the largest that goes into 45. So I'll give you a second to do that. What answer did you come up with, Gruden? Nine. Nine? Do we agree with nine? Eighteen. Okay, eighteen, does it go into 45? Type it into your calculator. 45 divided by 18. Does it go into it evenly? It's a whole, or it's a decimal, right? So that means that 18 is not it, but nine does. So nine is our DCF. All right, now we're going to deal with our letters, and we're always going to go in alphabetical order, so I'm going to start with my X's first. For this one, I have just an X. Write that down. For this one, I just have an X. And for the next term, I have X squared, so it's X times X. So again, the question is, what is the greatest number of X's that I can pull out of all three of those terms? Uno. Just one, right? Okay, I can take an X from here. I can take an X from here, and I can take an X from here and still have leftover pieces. So I'm going to have X to the first power. I don't have to write the exponent of 1, though. All right, so that takes care of my X's. I'm going to go ahead and erase that, so now we're going to focus on the Y's. So this um, term has Y to the third. So I'm going to write out Y times Y times Y. This is Y to the second, so Y times Y. And this is just a Y. So again, the question is, what's the greatest number of Y's that I can take out from all three terms? One. Just one. I heard somebody say two. Be careful. Can I take two Y's away from this? 
But I can't go to the negative, so I can't take out two y's from this. Yes, Ethan. All you have to do is just look at the less the less number of y's. You got it. Very good. So that is the trick that we can use. If you look at the exponent on the y's, we want to take out the smallest exponent of y's that we have, and that would just be y to the first power. So our GCF is 9xy. Do you guys have any questions on that? We have to be really good at this to be able to move forward to what we need to do today. All right, moving on. Example number four. Okay, dealing with the numbers only. We have 15, 12, and 48. Again, if you need to write out your list, we only write out the list for the smallest one and then use those factors to determine which one's the biggest that goes into 15 and 48. What is that answer going to be? Three. I hear a three. Anybody find anything bigger than a three that goes into 15 and 48? Okay, good, three is correct. Now, let's talk about our letters. So for this one, we have x times x. But for 12 and 48, we have nothing. So can I pull out an x from all three terms? Do I have an x here? Do I have an x here? No, so if x doesn't exist in every single term, then I cannot pull out an x. My GCF is just going to equal three. So I'm going to advise you in that box to write this down. The variable must exist in all terms for it to be a GCF. So if the letter is missing from one of the terms, does not, it will not be included. Questions that I can answer about that? All right, then we're going to go ahead and move on and take a look at the steps that we have here. So the steps to factoring out a monomial, just like our bell work today, we're going to go backwards. So we're going to first of all determine the GCF of the polynomial. I need you guys to fill in the blank, the GCF. That's what we just did. Step number two, we are going to divide each term by the GCF. So on step number two, we are going to use our divide monomial rules. So we're going to go back to chapter seven, and we're going to practice those again. Divide monomial rules. Step number three is then taking that information and writing the final answer. Your final answer will be the GCF followed by the polynomial <coughs> that remains after dividing. So it might look something like this. 3x squared is our GCF. 4x minus 9 is our polynomial afterwards, and it's going to look like this right here. All right, so let's go and take a look at our first example. Example number one. So we have a binomial, 27y squared plus 18y. Just like we did on the top four problems, we're going to start with our numbers first. What is the GCF of 27 and 18? I hear three. Is there anything bigger than three that goes into both of those? 3.5. I have no words for you. All right. All right, we're looking for a whole number. What's the biggest number that goes into 27 and 18? There's something bigger than Nine. three. Nine. Nine is the correct answer. Okay, now we're going to go with our letters. So we have y to the second, so y times y, and we have y. What's the greatest number of y's that we can pull out without going into the negatives? How many? Four. One is correct. So we're just going to take out y to the first power. Now, the next step that you're going to show is the division step. So I need you guys to draw a fraction bar underneath the first term and then write the GCF of 9y underneath it. Then we're going to draw our fraction bar and 9y underneath this one. We're going to go ahead and divide. <coughs> 27 divided by 9 is 3. Subtract the exponents of 2 minus 1 to give us y to the first power. Bring down the sign in the middle, which is a plus sign. 
18 divided by 9 is 2. What happens to our y's? They cancel out. They cancel out, <coughs> correct. The y's do not exist. So what we'll do now is we'll wrap this in parentheses. We're going to take the GCF and we're going to write it in front of the problem. So my final answer looks just like that. If you want to check your answer, then you can take what we did for bell work and go back and go forwards with it. So 9y times 3y is 27y squared. 9y times 2 is positive 18y. All right, questions about number five before I erase it. All right, next one. This one has a typo on my screen, so we're going to go ahead and X it out. So everybody X this problem out in your notes. X out the next problem in your notes. All right, moving on. So now we're looking at the one that says 30B plus 50X. Okay, starting with the numbers only. What is the GCF of 30 and 50? <coughs> 10. Anybody find anything bigger than 10? Okay, 10 is correct. Now, let's look at our letters. This one's kind of unique. We have a V here, but then do we have a V over here? No, so we cannot pull out a V. We have an X here, but we do not have an X here. So can I pull out an X? No. Remember what I said on the example four at the top? In order for us to be able to pull out the GCF, that letter has to exist in all the terms. Since the V does not exist here, and the X does not exist here, then the GCF is just 10. So we're going to draw our fraction bar to 10, fraction bar and 10. We're going to use our dividing monomial rules. 30 divided by 10 is 3, and then we'll just bring down the V. <coughs> bring down the plus sign. 50 divided by 10 is 5. <coughs> bring down the X. We're going to wrap that in parentheses, and then we always bring our 10 to GCF in front of the problem. So our final answer is 10 times the quantity of 3V plus 5X. Alright, Tiana, question? What if you don't have to Without like showing your work? Yeah. So you, the work for today's homework just needs to be that division step. So I'm only going to see the division step and then I'll just see the final answer. Okay? Alrighty, let's move on. Flip your paper over. So the types of problems that we will be more natural to using for the rest of this chapter are trinomials. So it's really important that we get much better working with three term expressions. So again, we're going to start off with the numbers to find the GCF. So we're looking at 9, 12, and 36. What is the GCF of 9, 12, and 36? Isaac, 3 is correct. Good. Now, let's look at our x's. So we have four x's here, we have three x's here, and we have two x's here. What is the greatest number of x's that we can take out without going into the negatives? Everybody say it out loud. Two. two is correct. So x squared is going to be our GCF. Then we're going to set up our division problem. We're going to divide this by 3x squared, 3x squared, and 3x squared. This is a step that you are required to show for homework. I need to see that division step. Everything else you can do mentally. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. Subtract the exponents to get x squared. Bring down the minus sign. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Subtract the exponents. 3 minus 2 is x to the first power. Bring down the plus sign. 36 divided by 3 is 12. What happens when we subtract 2 minus 2? It cancels out. Great. So we will not have an x here at the end. We will then wrap it in parentheses, take that GCF, drop it in front of the problem. So my final answer is what I have boxed in on the screen. And once again, you can check your answer by simply going forward with this and doing the multiplication. All right, show me with your thumbs how you're feeling. Easy, medium, difficult. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This next one I want you guys to try on your own and see how, how it goes for you.
All right, so GCF was a little different on this one, right? It really does. Well, no. there is, but there isn't. So if there's not a greatest common factor, then what is the greatest common factor of all numbers? Zero. Zero. One. One. One goes into every number, right? Yeah, I got it. One goes into seven, one goes into 11, one goes into 12. So our GCF is going to be a one. And then we have three X's, we have two X's, we have one X. So what's the greatest number of X's we can take out? One. One of them. So our GCF is one X, or we can just write X. Okay, the one is not needed because it's an invisible one next to the X here. All right, so we're just going to divide everything by one X or just X. It's up to you if you want to put the one there or not. So this is just gonna be seven X squared because three minus one is two. Bring down the minus sign, 11. We have two minus one is X. Bring down the plus sign and the 12 and the X's cancel out. Remember to bring your GCF over. So we're gonna have X times the quantity, seven X squared minus 11 X plus 12. Questions? Okay, last example. We're not doing all of them. This next one is the last one that we are doing. All right, so GCF, we have a four, we have a 12, we have an eight. What is our GCF? Everybody say it out loud. Four. 72 is incorrect. Four is the correct answer though. All right. Then for our X's, we have two of them. For the next one, we have just an X. And then we do not have an X for the eight, correct? So what's the greatest number of X's we can pull out? Zero. We cannot pull out any X's. Remember, X has to exist in every single term. So our only GCF is just a four. Now we're going to divide. Divide every term by four. So four divided by four gives us one. Bring down the X squared. Bring down the minus sign. 12 divided by four is three. Bring down the X. Bring down the plus sign. Eight divided by four is two. And then don't forget your GCF, it's an important part of the problem. We'll pull that out in front. This one here is not needed. You can have it, but it's not needed. All right, so that's where we're gonna stop for today um, with our lesson. Um, the sub is gonna pass out to you your homework. And let me show you what assignment you're going to be doing. On your homework, you're gonna be doing on the front side problems one through eight and 23 through 26, this last one is something that we have not covered, but I want you guys to try it on your own. Just a reminder, as I said in the video, that work is required. The work that is required for today's assignment is showing me that division step. So I should see, here's the problem, here's the division step, and here's my final answer. Alrighty.